Yeah, I think we're probably good to go ahead and start the recording right there, because that wasn't actually music, right? So we can't get popped for that on YouTube, I don't think. Oh, shit. Ooh, caught it right at the last minute. Wow. Wow. Uh, music almost started playing again, and we that, that would have meant we would have gotten popped by YouTube. But uh, fortunately... That did not happen. Can we get a sound check from the Yona? <laughs> oh yeah, that that blew out the levels, man. That was good. That was awesome. That's how, how you, I make my entrance. I have a reputation to uphold. There you go. There you go. How you doing, man? It is uh, December fourteenth, two thousand twenty-three. I'm the Lieutenant Con- <laughs> Colonel. He better be high. Yes, this is major, major high, Yona. Once again, put the uh, camera over here and uh, yeah. talk to the stage crew. Let's you, get some lights on the situation. Yeah, you already know Dylan is going to ask wh- whenever the fuck he shows up. Because, uh, of course, he can't be here on time. You know, that's that's how much he cares. But, you know, as soon as he shows up that he's going to ask the question. How high is the Yona? Correct. So let's just get it out of the way mm. right now. Matter of fact, why don't we just do that at the beginning of every show to force him to go and watch it from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So right go. now, I would definitely say I'm, that down. I'm higher than the wedgie in Connecticut Governor Mike Malloy's butt crack. Uh, he is a total shit lib up in Hartford. And Biscotti knows. Dylan knows him yeah. all too well. Are you That's the nutmeg state, by the way, folks. Nutmeg state. Are, and and it goes great in eggnog with uh, plenty of liquor. Yeah. Are you higher than the monthly bill of the Biden family therapist? Oh, I'm higher than that. I'm higher than the monthly contributions to just one of the Biden shell corporations. <laughs> nice. I mean, nice. hey, also you're going to enrich 10 of your closest family members every month. Anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a lot of mouths to feed. A lot of mouths to which, feed. Uh, you, know, you know that. For those that weren't paying attention, yeah. there is breaking news in that regard. Apparently, the... Uh, What's that little congressional body called? The the House of uh, Representatives or whatever. Um, yeah. The Congress critters. Um, they managed to pass a resolution in the House allowing for a formal impeachment inquiry to begin of uh, our glorious Supreme Sniffer-in-Chief. Yeah. Why? Why? And why now? Uh, well, here's the thing. I'll, I'll tell you right now. I, I already know I can, I'm scrying on the glass as we speak. All right. I can already tell you it's going to fail. Nothing's fucking going to come from it. You can ask me how I know later. Well, you know, Congress is Kabuki theater. It's not, you know, uh, summer shakespeare in the park or anything of that nature uh th- this uh kabuki theater uh graciously enough has been translated into english for the hoi polloi and it's also dumbed down i think to a third grade level at this point um so uh you know it's it's so pathetic um i mean uh whenever i log on to youtube now on my uh, fourth YouTube channel, uh, in my feed, my suggested videos are all these Forbes breaking news clips. Oh yeah! Now man. apparently they on love YouTube to shove Forbes in your feed. I don't. I don't get and that. Forbes is basically the C-SPAN feed of YouTube now, with all these basically C-SPAN clips of Kabuki theater shorts yeah. from the floor of the Capitol. So are and, they trying you know, to be like the new Bloomberg? Is that what's going on? Yes. Okay. Yeah, totally. Totally. Difference is, um, 
Steve Forbes, a lot taller than Mike Bloomberg and arguably more fuckable. Does not Just, need lifts. That's how you translate that, folks. Does not need lifts in his that's shoes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, you'll never find like the drizzle, Steve, much like the drizzle. Yeah, you'll never yeah. find Steve Forbes wearing some Ron DeSantis Cuban four inch heels right. in his shoes. Right. Totally unnecessary. Yeah. Or as I like to call him, Florida Governor Run to Satan. Hail, hail Lucifer. Um, anyways. Yeah. Has he been to the Wailing the Wall recently? Man, oh, yeah. Yeah. I figured. I mean, it's about that, you know. About that time to make another pilgrimage and, you know, place your fealty many... at the feet of uh, the altar and whatever the hell else oh, it is they do. I'm just really curious how many members of the Israeli Knesset have ever traveled to beautiful Tallahassee, Florida, up in the Crackers Panhandle to, uh, no. you know, have, have a little confab. Nope. With those Florida state legislators, but I, I'm going to nope. say it's never happened. Probably not. It's uh, uh, Boca Raton is in Florida, right? Yes, that's where yeah. all the orange Jews live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that near Tallahassee? No, that would be at the opposite end. Opposite end of the state. The right. End I'm going to say probably zero. That's my yeah. guess. Uh, that I mean, is, matter of fact, that is my final answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're never going to find uh, Israelis up on I-10. They're going to be down on the lower end of I-95, closer to the Miami Dade set. Yeah. It bees like that. We're not even but, ten minutes know, in and already licking the third rail. Um. <laughs> well, to be fair, the third rail is a privatized rail, and it was built by Brightline Trains, which is a division of Virgin. Um, so, uh, shout out Richard Branson. Yes, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Does he still betrothed? have a podcast? I don't know. I, I guess he's still alive. I mean, you know, my advice to folks these days is they've gotten medieval on our ass. Betrothed thine self to a fine noble and. You know, pick hmm. your noble. You know, yeah. if you want to, you want to lick the feet of Elon Musk or Richard Branson, or probably about time um, to roll those dice, don't you think? Or what's the name? Pierre Mordiar. Omidyar. Omidyar. Yeah. Omidyar. Uh, owner, oh, yeah, owner yeah, Omidyar. of the Intercept. That, yeah, that thank, fine. Thank you. Um, That's right. Digital publication. The Intercept. Yeah, you know, you know why they're called the Intercept, right? Because they intercept the information before it gets to the public. Well, if a whistleblower is trying to alert the public, that's where the intercept steps in and makes sure right. Doesn't makes happen. sure that they're turned over yeah, to the authorities repeatedly. Nip it right in the bud. Yep. Shout out Daniel Hale. Correct. Anyway. <laughs> and Glenn oh, Greenwald. Oh, wait. The, uh, speaking of manufacturing reality, we have a winner. Anyways, God, that was perfect. Yeah, and 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 just just as the notes say beneath uh, the uh, actual stream screen you're seeing here on the internet right now, folks, there is no notes, there is no script. Yeah. We do this shit live, like Papa Bear O'Reilly. Fuck. It. Well, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's like that. Matter of fact, uh, I I was gifted with some uh, extra technical expertise on the broadcast setup uh, this evening without my knowledge, which was was pretty cool. So I had uh, apparently wow. Briar Rose had gotten up and was walking around on the keyboard uh, when I was in the shower, I guess. Uh, and stuff just wasn't working right. So I had to go and, and find everything that she had uh, adjusted and, and put it back to where I like for it to be. Right. Yeah. And that was 20 minutes before going on air tonight. Yeah. You know, it, it's the same issue that incels deal with. Everything, <laughs> you kind of get used to it, and all of a sudden... Pussy comes into the equation, and it's just a total 
Okay. Everything you thought it would be, everything you didn't think it would be, and it was none of those things. It's a learning experience. Wow. So something to look forward to you, to all you incels out there. Keep licking that third rail. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, uh, if you happen to touch yourself while staring at a poster of a shirtless Donald Trump with a Bible in one hand and a machine gun in the other, here at Liberty Radio, we don't judge. It's good to love yourself. No, Back but to you, you should probably keep that shit to yourself. That's weird. Right. Like right. That's, that's but, like borderline. Like maybe but, maybe you're listening to the wrong thing and like other things can help you a little bit better. I don't know. It's just but, weird. but there are raging clues, and it's our guy on the inside, Drizzle. Uh huh. He's one of the good cops. Yeah. Which guy is that? Which guy his was that? Is, be the the one that's our guy. His name is Q. Yeah. His name is Q, and oh. and he actually makes all the cool shit for James Bond. Are there are there literally still people out there that believe that shit? That there's there's some yeah. secret coterie that's like fighting the good fight uh, against the the pedophile elites and at any minute now those indictments are going to get unsealed and it's all going to go down and you are correct how goodman man. you are totally on point how goodman hillary's going to jail tonight yeah okay sure sure man shout I out want, i want some i want some of what that dude's smoking seriously <laughs> That's some next level shit. It really is. And honestly, that would be a better space to occupy uh, mentally, right? Than, than what's actually happening. Because what's actually happening is the opposite of all of that. And having to actually face that reality day in and day out for years on end, dude, that, that's going to do horrible things. To your psychology. Yeah. Maybe that's the point. So, with so many black pills going around these days, and more and more people taking black pills, often Yona gets hit with the question, what should I wash the black pill down with? What's the best chaser hmm. for black pill? And And folks, if you were wanting to know, Now's your chance to find out. It's called manufacturingreality.org. It's available on this thing called the Internet. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it'll take some of the edge off that black pill. Help it slide down the old gullet nice and smooth. like <laughs> And Great. and helps Great. with your gut biome and right. digestion. Just use so the drop-down the... menus and, the, and you're off and running, folks. We're the, we're the doom medicine. <laughs> That's right. Ask your doctor about manufacturing reality. Yeah, take right. this with it. It's a little bit better. And, and, and now for our uh, paid sponsor <laughs> message. Ask your doctor about manufacturingreality.org and if Grand Theft World might be right for you. Oh, I figured now, since now everybody's bummed out, this would probably be a good time to go ahead and do the shout out to Death to Tyrants for uh, sending me this uh, this awesome hoodie that I'm wearing right here from yeah. the AM wake up store. Thank you. Thank you very much, D. It's uh it's not only comfy, it is also warm and uh I like it. I like it a lot. And speaking of death tyrants, yeah. the I got it brand on the tape this time. New, the most recent musical offering from yours truly DJ Hyona just so happens to be the Death to Tyrants remix of a new track I made called Juicy Cutie. Juicy Cutie, which features uh, Christopher Wallace on vocals, a.k.a. Notorious B.I.G., a.k.a. The Biggie Smalls. Um, and then uh, I went in a real electronic direction because uh, Dead Fella has been inspiring the fuck out of me with all these bubbly bass, like, like a bubbling electronic bass sound. And so I pulled that in on the second verse of that uh, remix. And um, I guess you'd call it a remix. I mean, it's 
juiciest Biggie song. I just used him a cappella vocals to put over top of my song. Um, but yeah, that, that's a remix, obviously. I guess. Oh, I'm too high to figure it out at this point. But what's interesting is uh, Dead Fella sent me a new song that he is working on with um, Dr. Dennis, Kingsley Dennis. Yeah. Called um, Lazarus Don't Get Up. The name of the song is Lazarus Don't Get Up. And it's like Dead Fella just keeps leveling up. It it's absolutely and I mean it just I'm just talking about it. it gives me goosebumps. He he sent it to me and I've listened to it at least a hundred times now. It's incredible. Wow. So I, I, I can't wait till he uh is done with that and sent it to you. I, I'm gonna be putting something on it too. Uh at the end of this uh broadcast. I've got some things uh, lined up to record. To send over to Dead Fella for that song, and uh, for two other songs we're working on. So, so we are steadily making more music because uh, good, we need it. We got to keep providing fresh content to those Wednesday potlucks. And I, man, am I sorry that I missed out on last <laughs> night's fun and festivities in the chat? My God, I missed one potluck. Yeah. And 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 look what crawls in the chat room. I could have had so much fun with that toad. It's always the one you miss. Like it's it's not just Liberty Radio. It's like all of them. It's always the one that you miss. Yeah. There's like something something magical happens, and that's probably what it was. It was just I, I don't know. I checked out oh. the dude's channel. Uh, I have no I have no clue who this person is was was trying to be whatever. Yeah. You're on camera, right? I don't know. But I go to the store real quick and I'll hang right back. You know. Hang on, uh, just one oh, second. Yeah, it was an adventure. Uh, it was one of those random things that happens on a random night that you're not expecting, and uh, 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 you just deal with it. No problem. Hey, well, I'll let him go. I probably let him go longer than I should have, but you know. Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry about that. It fine. Oh, I kept going. That's I'm my good going. nephew there. Uh, you know. Everybody say hi to Isaiah. I probably should have <laughs> done something about it. Uh, sooner than I did because I had a feeling I had a feeling that because it mellowed out for a little bit and I was like all right everybody seems to be playing nice and then you know started getting like it was going in an abusive direction I was like all right it's just done you're done out of here so I the, the again, have no clue who it who it is do you think it was actually human or was it just a hate bot um, if it, if it was a bot, um, it's definitely more advanced than what I generally give bots credit for because it, it had okay. me fooled enough into thinking that it could be another human being. Like I was well, noticing I some repetition, uh, in, uh, the, the way it was posting. Like it was, it was trying to push across a, a a persona, right? It was trying to make you view it in a in a specific way. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. But I mean, well, obviously we're we're we're, we're uh, garnering attention. Well, I don't want to hit the sticky fingers. Maybe Where's that cam to like him. I think it's time. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. There it is. Kim de la Kim. See if we can reach. Yeah. Hmm. Is that one of the local dispensaries in Ohio? Uh, no. No. Uh, you got to go north of Ohio where it's legal. L little place called um, Machigan, I think it's out. Oh, yeah. Machigan. Um, there, 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 there's Ohio. a big city up there called um, Detroit. Detroit in uh, Michigan. Yeah. Just learning English. 
Shout out to Marshall Mathers the third and Bobby Ritchie, aka Eminem and Kid Rock. Oh, that's right, his last name. Holy shit. Is that really his name? Bobby Ritchie? Yeah. Dude. Kid Rock? Yeah. When when I joined the magazine crew at twenty one years old, uh there was a dude on the crew named Bob Ritchie. Looked nothing like Kid Rock though. Like completely different person but that's wild you know i always liked kid rock until that movie joe dirt came out and ever since then i kind of just always look at kid rock like he's a dick (laughs) and a cruel and mean dick dude that's knucking futz kid rock poor guy carrying around a fucking big poop turd the whole time thinking it was a meteoroid and and who is the one that let him know that it was actually uh an airplane poop slug it was the native american yeah joe that's not a meteor it's poop right, folks. Yeah. 21 minutes folks that's all it took 21 minutes and and wasn't the Presley girl on that too? Presley girl. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, she was the remember. she was the romantic interest in Joe Dirt, and she ended up, you know, she was always going with Kid Rock, aka Robert Ritchie, instead of Joe Dirt. Hmm. Broke his heart. Can't remember the first one. Yeah, she's a Presley. That girl. I, I think. I, I, you know what? I am on the internet. I guess I could look here. You could, yeah. You could always search it up, you know. Yo, dirt. Do we want to save Lahaina for the second hour? I'm thinking, yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Oh my God! What? Did you know that in the year 2015 there was Joe Dirt Two, Beautiful Loser? What? Why? There's a sequel to that movie. Why? I know, right? Is that a so money 2000, In 2001, Joe Dirt came out. And in 2015, Joe Dirt 2, Beautiful Loser. Yeah, so, uh, oh. wow, I just learned something new. There, There's a, a, a sequel to Joe Dirt. Um, I, I'm kind of sorry that I ever even watched right? Joe Dirt. So I doubt I'll be watching the sequel. Shout out. Is anyone's you. life richer now? That's that's kind of the question, really. Yay, Biscotti's here. Brittany Daniel. Brittany Daniel. Was the romantic interest in that. Dennis Miller was also in that movie, as you may recall. And of course, playing the role of Robbie was Bobby Ritchie, a.k.a. Kid Rock. Yep. Shout out to Detroit and Machigan. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, where do we begin? Where do we begin this week? Okay, so... Do we, do we start with Hunter Biden skipping... His deposition, which he was under subpoena for, by the way, he was his presence was under, uh, you know, like legal constraint for him to be there at that time doing that thing. Like right. There was, there was a said, thing from the court that says this is what's going to happen. Otherwise, we get to come get you. Well, see, Hunter said that he didn't want to testify in secret. He wanted to testify in front of cameras. And so they, uh, in Congress, fought against Hunter well, they, by they telling tape. him that they would allow it to be on cameras and well, capitulated yeah. to his demands. And in response, he then still skipped the subpoena right. and had a very public press conference on the steps of the Capitol touting all of his bona fides and his curriculum vitae, justifying why he's worth 
eighty thousand dollars in coke and whores every month for Rizma Gas Energy. Year, year. It was in a year. I don't think he can go through that in a month. I don't know if anybody could go through that in a month uh, and just coke and whores. His, Good God! Uh, I think it was called a stipend. Right. His executive stipend for being a board member of Barisma Gas Energy oh, Holdings LLC was eighty thousand dollars per month. Yeah, yeah. That's Which a, is not uh, really having to do anything. You just get eighty grand a month. Yeah, that's over a million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. 80 grand a month in 10 that months is, is $800,000. Yep. Yep. Well, let's see. 800000 plus one hundred sixty dollars is $960,000. So it's not a million dollars. We can just call it a million, right? I mean, you could round up the last $40,000, but... I mean, a lot of the time you know, the IRS is going to do that anyway, so we can just call it a million. When, yeah. when hunters and queef or keef or whatever the fuck they call it, trying to get hookers and blow... They don't round up. They round down. And he's looking at the scales. He's he's weighing the shit twice, man. He knows they're not rounding up. They're rounding down. And Hunter Biden has a question for all of you, America. Where's my missing crack? This shit ain't weighing right. These are digital scales, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, I remember when... Uh, Cheeto Dick's um, little Cheeto links had to go testify in front of the Adam Shit. Or I'm sorry, Adam Schiff. No, I got it right the first time. Adam Schiff, the congressman from the Congressional District of Raytheon. Um, yeah. When he was running the, the first two sham impeachments of Trump, um, they dragged Trump's kids in on subpoena, grilled them for days on end. And I don't think any of them were leaving laptops and cell phones here, there, and everywhere showing um, pedophilia and coke and horse and everything else in the images. But um, despite all of that, despite the open and shut pay-to-play quid pro quo bribery schemes of the Biden family, somehow, some way, he's going to escape. Impeachment. Oh, yeah. Well, I already said that back at the beginning of the show. Right. Right. Absolutely. He's going to escape. Uh, uh, But why? It doesn't make sense. I mean, even Clinton, was Clinton successfully impeached? I think he was. I think so. Yeah. And he still finished out his term. So, like, what does it even really mean? What is, what is it? What does it do? It doesn't remove him from office. Impeachment is almost as brutalizing as the thousand lashes with the wet, broken noodle. That's what it seems like, right? Like, it's just, ooh, we, we made it public that you did a bad thing. All right, now go on about your business. I mean, the whole thing about impeachment was it was supposed to be such a career ending um, parade of shame that anyone in their right mind that had any class whatsoever would just resign and go exile themselves and ostracize in endless lifelong shame till death. (laughs) Richard Milhouse Nixon, Spiro Agnew. But that's not what they do these days. That was different. Like, so, like, Nixon wasn't getting blowjobs under the desk in the Oval Office, right? Which yeah, was, he was giving them. We have it on tape. And he's a loud dick right, sucker, too. Right, 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 Just like Bobby right. Kennedy Jr. Right. But what I'm saying is that's not what Nixon was facing impeachment for. Nixon was actually facing impeachment for, uh, like, fraud, essentially. You know, which is one of those things where if you're a part of the system and you get caught doing that, they tend to make an example out of you, right? So that other people won't try to get away with it and be dumb enough to get caught. (laughs) It's essentially how it works. You know, I'm sure most everyone in the audience 
is aware of the infamous farewell address by former President Dwight D. Eisenhower, a.k.a. We Like Ike. And in this farewell address, he specifically calls out something that he terms the military industrial complex. It's a, it's a very famous speech, and, and I include an excerpt of that in uh, my most popularly downloaded song on the iTunes, that being World War III Save Our Economy. But nonetheless, when Eisenhower gave that farewell address, it was with some expectation that Eisenhower's running mate, who was running to be president himself after having been vice president for eight years, in the presidential election of 1960. And Eisenhower thought, well, I guess my VP is about to take over as president. Now I'm going to do my farewell address. And then they had the first televised presidential debate between Eisenhower's VP, a.k.a. Richard Nixon, and the Democratic challenger, some uh, mobster from Boston named Jack Kennedy. And uh, at that first televised presidential debate, because Nixon was so excessively moist and sweaty and slimy, and he seemed nervous, and Kennedy just seemed charismatic, confident, and well-prepared. And after that first televised debate, all of a sudden, where Nixon had a massive lead over Kennedy, it completely changed the, the nature of the election. Uh, and Kennedy narrowed the gap. And in fact, when John F. Kennedy won the presidency in the election of 1960, he was not ever expected to win. He was never the favorite. He was always the underdog. And it was quite a shock when he did win because and, and if you look at how much he beat Nixon by, it's the slimmest winning uh, vote for president in U.S. history. Well, yeah, because the mob is what by got here. Kennedy into office. That's right. Well, I mean, he's a mobster from Boston, and so, of course, the other mobsters are going to help mobsters. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't understand why this is a question. Like, oh. Sammy the Bull Gravano literally, like, laid the whole thing out in his interview with Jay Dyer. He's like, yeah, without without the mob, there's no way Kennedy ever would have been elected. Called tipping the scale. Oh, yeah. You just put a finger on the scale. And I, hey, look, Correct. our guy and got that's, in. That's exactly what was done because there was a call that was placed to whoever it was that oversees all of the dons. And they were like, look, when the time comes, you need to go do this thing to make sure that this happens. Yeah. And so it turns out, if you go back through American history, you're going to find out that, for one, what we consider to be American empire and American history is actually Anglo-American history and an Anglo-American empire. Time to take you down a few notches, Uncle Sam. You've been touting yourself as all, you know, rugged, maverick, doing this on my own, you know, mano solo, and no, nah, no, nah, it's not like that at all. It's been run by the city of London, and it still is. Um, but when it comes to Grand Theft World and this New World odor, the New World odor began... Several centuries ago, I mean, some could even make the argument it goes all the way back to the Codex Alimentalis of uh, Pope Urban when he issued that uh, papal edict from the Vatican City to kick off the great conquista of the New World back in the 15th century. Because it's been a grand theft world of competing monopolies and mafias, competing criminal family organization and nothing's changed it's not like we've advanced from the medieval ages or we've advanced from the 1930s and the 40s 
of mobs? No, doesn't seem like it there, at all. It just seems like never the packaging been was changed, right? Yeah. It was made to appear more palatable. But it's still the same relationship between the same two classes. The peasants oh, and, you know, and their overlords. We did just pass through December the 10th. Yeah. And shout out to my good friend at War Media up on the Pacific Northwest coast there, Chan DeMasta, with those at Roar Media. Shout out Oz and Amber and the whole crew up there. Uh, I caught one of her shows earlier this week. I guess it was on December the 10th, where she did a a loving tribute, almost 30 minutes in length, to a former journalist for the uh, Mercury Messenger, I think. San Jose Mercury. Uh, I was speaking of... uh, Gary Webb, who uh, broke the story on Freeway Rick Ross and the CIA cultivating narcotics and distributing them uh, throughout the United States, particularly in the inner city ghettos uh, during the Iran-Contra affair. Uh, And amazingly, only recently, within the last two or three years, the CIA finally begrudgingly admitted that, yes, these people were on our payroll and working for us, but we didn't know what they were doing. Oops. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Sure. Okay. Sure. sure thing. Um, yeah, they didn't know what I mean, Barry you know, Seal was doing in Mean Arkansas with Bill Clinton. Right. Back I mean, in the 80s? They didn't, they didn't know about that? Technically, Oliver North lied to Congress. And he was yeah. found in contempt and charged with the felony, but it doesn't count because he was received a presidential pardon and it was expunged, so it never happened. Huh. So, and even Ronald Reagan looked into Iran Contra while he was president in office. And I'll have you know, and this I can put this on the old Gipper. Reagan looked into it himself. Mm-hmm. Because the allegations were made that under Reagan's watch, there was this Iran Contra scandal going on. And so Reagan got on TV and announced, and I'm announcing to all of America that Nancy and I are going to take a strong look into this Iran. And you know what? He looked at nothing there. There was nothing to nope. see. No, nope. we investigated ourselves and we found out we've done nothing, nothing. wrong. Move along, folks. Yep. Nothing to see here. Yep. Nothing to see here. And then if that wasn't bad enough, then, what was it, George H.W. Bush meets with Hinckley's brother Mm -hmm. the night before the other Hinckley brother goes to assassinate Reagan, which would have allowed H.W. Bush to then immediately become president because H.W. Bush ran against Reagan for the Republican nomination in 1980. And they being the Republican Party made a bargain and said, okay, We'll let you be on the ticket, CIA man, but you have to be yeah. second fiddle to uh, the movie star who is always the co-star to a fucking chimpanzee. Well, yeah, because uh, there was Bonzo no way the chimp. There was no way anyone was going to vote for H.W. in 1980 for president. Wasn't going to fucking happen. He was a what? CIA director four years previously. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, who the Look, fuck Americans might be dumb, but they're not that dumb. How did he, you know, that reminds me. How in the fuck did George H.W. Bush ever get elected president in 1980? Because as soon as he took office and his campaign promise was, as we all remember, read my lips. Yeah. No new taxes. And then he went on to pass all these new taxes and... He is the one. Well, that's why he was only a one-term president. He lost president. his re-election. Right. A one-term. How did how did he get in? He rode the waves of whatever the fuck it was, Reaganism. I don't know. They had. Oh, they, that's they right. Had they were people called under it, a spell with Reagan. They, they were called at the they Reagan They still Revolution. have people under a spell with him. And that's two years after uh, former Goldwater Republicans. Um, Elizabeth Warren, a.k.a. Um, Chowder's Mini Clams, and uh, what's the other fake? Uh, oh, yeah, Hillary Rodham, a.k.a. Yeah. Hillary Rodham Clinton. Yeah, Two and they're going to run girls. the Reagan play again with Schwarzenegger in 2028. And they infiltrated uh, 
they infiltrated the Democratic Party in the early 80s and went with this, what was they were called, um, third way Democrats. And it was the mm-hmm. third way Democrats that worked with the Reagan Republicans in 88. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was such a blowback from that betrayal in 1988 that there was a huge exodus from the Democratic Party in 1992 over to the new Reform Party that had been started by Texas oil billionaire H. Roth Perot. Who did? Folks, Who here's did the deal. If we sign this NAFTA, all you're going to hear is the giant sucking sound as all the jobs leave Texas for Mexico. Ross Perot was right, folks. Yeah. Who did they put up against H.W. in 88? I don't remember. Walter Mondale. Was it Mondale? No. They wouldn't have done that, would they? But Walter Mondale was vice president to Jimmy Carter. He was a, a shoe-in, right? Oh, that doesn't mean any, that doesn't it, mean anything. It, Look at Al not, Gore. Look at Al was Gore it not for crying Bush out loud. Jesus. Mondale in 1988. I guess I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm getting there. I'm just typing slow because I'm high. There we go. Let's see. How good is the memory of the Yona? Was it right. Walter? No, it was uh, Michael Dukakis yeah. of Massachusetts wow. who beat out Walter Mondale. Well, Mondale was uh, 84, right? Yeah. He ran in 84 against Reagan and uh, got like the worst beat down in elect- election right. history, I believe. Mondale ran again in eight. He ran in yeah. 80 and 80. I'm sorry. He ran in 84 and lost. And then he went for the yeah. Democratic ticket in 88 and lost out to um, <laughs> Two bushy conference. eyebrow dude. The, the guy with the monster bushy eyebrow. Oh, that's so funny. Another Massachusetts governor failed bid for the presidency. Wow. Yep. Mm-mm-mm. And his, uh, his running mate, you might remember was old Lloyd Benson, who That's I right. think had just turned a hundred years old at that point. And and his might famous be off line by a decade or two. I think it was Lloyd Benson who said to Dan Quayle in the vice presidential debate, "You're no Jack Kennedy, Dan Quayle." Yeah, I think it was. Um, that was Lloyd Benson's. Uh, Famous moment. Right. That was his You're no Jack burn. Kennedy, son. Yeah. You're no Jack Kennedy, son. I know I'm a hundred year old Texan. I'm yeah. so old I make James Carville look like a baby. It's like smacking a retarded kid for saying fuck, you know. It's just yeah. something that people with class just don't do. Uh excuse me, WT Steed in the Odyssey chat. New Britain is still mopped up as fuck. Learn yeah. some Polish or Ukrainian, buddy. Come on. Anyway. <laughs> Come on now. We know this. I know this. You know this. We all know. So, all right, since we're since we apparently wandered into the political sphere of uh Grand Theft World. Oh dear. Yona. Do you know who the wealthiest politicians are mm. in the United States? In these United States, because I'm, Nan- I'm Nancy Pelosi's got to be up there just because. Oh, she you think is so crafty with the uh, stock picks? Do you think she's uh, top ten? Absolutely. Really, I'd be shocked if she didn't make the top ten. All right. Well, let's. I, I would beat myself with a hammer like her husband does. All right. Bear with me, folks. I'm super high, but we're going to get there. I promise. Let's see. Why don't we check this out? See if this is working. Oh, hold on. Can you hear the train noise howling in the background? No, I don't think I can. It's really loud. There we go. Boom. Because uh, I live right beside the Norfolk Southern Main Line track from Norfolk, Virginia to Chicago, Illinois. And we get 
at this point, we're getting about 10 to 12 intermodal trains flying by every day. Oh, wow. Um, coming straight from the port of Norfolk with uh, all those TEU double stack. Wow. That's quite a bit. Oh, there's Pritzker. Yeah. Shout out to the land of Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Daryl Lysa, yeah, 10. he's a total. Yeah. Your top Jim 10. Justice. Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm trying, hey there's I'm my trying governor. To do, I'm trying to do the countdown here. <laughs> and Yunkin made the list. You're spoiling the list. Oh my God! Yeah. I'm so I feel so proud see, to be a Virginian right, now. So this this is shout out to the old Dominion. No, right. Anyway, so this isn't. Uh, this is the top twelve, right? Number one through number twelve. Do you do you see Nancy Pelosi's name on there anywhere? Is well, this a legit list? At, it's cut off at Mitt Romney. Is it? Let me see. Can you scroll down some more? Let me see who's below yeah. Mitt Romney. Oh, okay, so you we got, got Rick, Rick Scott, Scott. You got Mark Warner, Scott Peters, and Michael McCall. I have Mark no idea Warner who that is. Again, yeah. again, Virginia's well, on that list. Twice. Mark Warner's Mark Warner's old money, right? Mark Warner's part of the establishment. Like if you lived in Virginia, you know that he's not. He's not like you and me. He's he's different. Uh. I'm going to estimate that Nancy Pelosi's between her and her husband, they've got at least 650 million. So why aren't they on this list? Well, because I think it's just I, I don't know if it's counting spouses or not. I think it's just what what we know that these individuals have. I don't know access to or whatever. I don't know Pritzker. He's another old money family, so that's not surprising. I didn't think he would be at the top. Uh, but yeah, because they're uh, they're part of one of the massive hotel conglomerates. That's right. Yeah, just like the Hilton. Family. Yeah, I as wouldn't Paris be surprised would say, to see hot. him as a potential presidential candidate in another four years. Quite honestly, because by then the whole trans thing will be fully inflamed, and uh, you know he's got that sibling, so that'll be yeah. uh, that'll be a leverage point. Man, that's great. I mean, yeah. look how good the last billionaire did in the presidential election. Shout out to um, the uh, shortest Keebler elf to ever run for president, Mike Bloomberg. Yeah. I loved it when he was speaking to the hoi polloi from the dais. He really had charisma. Shout out, Mike Bloomberg. Um, Who the fuck yeah, is this, this, uh, this richest politicians in the u.s list is very informative but there are some people that should be up in those numbers that aren't because their wealth is just being ignored yeah and maybe it's because maybe nancy pelosi has enough llcs and pllcs and enough shell corporations to say that well that money didn't go to me that that went to this charity in marin county that all of my children happen to be the board members. Uh, but what right. if it's not my will? Oh, by the way, my daughter was filming during January the 6th and has the exclusive rights to all the footage. Right. That's yeah. a true story. Yeah. It's yeah, an actual true, true story. story. <laughs> Search it up. <laughs> and for those that aren't aware, Nancy Pelosi married into the Baltimore mob in Maryland. Yep. And that's how she's got all this power. Yep. Because she was tied into the mob power behind the Kennedy administration. Yeah. She's been coattailing on that mob flex ever since. Yeah. And apparently, governor of California, American psycho himself, Gavin Newsom, uh, Boy, I yes, believe nice is a blood arts. relative of Nancy Pelosi, as well as Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Isn't that interesting that they're all related to one another? So whatever happened to that investigation of the FBI fake assassination plot of Gretchen Whitmer that was completely made the fuck up? I believe uh, it, everything was dropped. Oh. Yeah. I believe Gosh, the I... judge looked at it and was like... Uh, 
I guess that failed spectacularly. Like, this yeah. wouldn't have happened without the FBI being a part of it. So get the fuck out of my courtroom. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I believe that's what happened. Uh, I'm not 100% certain that's what happened, but you know, that's what I need to be able to sleep at night. So that's what I believe. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We're making progress here, yeah. folks. We've almost made it to um, the second hour where uh, I promise everyone is get everyone is going to get laid in the second hour. We've got all kinds of flower necklaces ready to go. Oh boy. We're going deep in on Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I did actually. I spoiled it for myself, and uh, uh, and I. And watched speaking it of Hawaii, wasn't Edward Snowden working for intelligence contractor Booz Allen Hamilton mm -hmm. at the Schofield Barracks in Hawaii on the island of Oahu when he had his great come to Jesus moment, and days later he was um, skulking about darting from alley to alley in Hong Kong to meet with Glenn Greenwald. Was he in Hawaii when he had that moment? I'm trying to remember because it's been a while since I've read his book. Uh, I he think flew, you're he, right, but I'm, I'm he not 100% certain. And, uh, he got on a plane and flew from when Otis Honolulu hit, so that International. book is gone. Yeah, he flew from Honolulu International to Hong Kong. And then after meeting with uh, Lloyd Portress and Glenn Greenwald, he then booked a flight to South America. But it had a layover at Sheremetyevo Airport in Moscow. Oh, yeah, real cloak and dagger shit. And when he went to uh, get on his next you know, after he did his layover, when he went to get on his next plane, they seized his passport because the United States revoked his passport and stranded him in the airport. Uh, and I think after being stranded in the airport for a couple of months, the Russians had sympathy on him and said, well, you can apply for asylum here. I guess America doesn't want you anymore. And then, of course, America said, ha ha! Snowden defected to the Russians! He's a Russian spy. And uh, he had no intention of ever going to Russia or staying in Russia. It was just a airplane layover at an airport. And they pulled his passport and he was stuck there. And as far as I know, he's still in Russia. Yeah, he is still in Russia. They just, uh, I think that he got a Russian passport recently within yeah, the last that's right. year or so. Something like he's that. He's now actually a full blown citizen. So now he can actually he can travel outside of Russia, but he still can't come back to the United States. Right. I guess they're just not gonna fuck with him anywhere else for right now, I guess. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know how much of his story I believe at this point. Hmm. I just remember that when he met with Glenn Greenwald and Laura Portress in Hong Kong, that he had all these documents, all this stuff that he gave to Glenn Greenwald. And after that meeting, a few juicy little niblets and tidbits were shared to the public. And nothing else has ever been shared with the public. And all the other stuff that he was given, we've never seen. And none of it's ever been made accessible to any other researchers or the public, or anybody else. And if if I ever have the chance to message or speak with uh, the great New York lawyer himself and Portuguese bilingual extraordinaire, Glenn Greenwald, that's my first He's a lawyer? question. Yeah, he was a New York lawyer. And that's how he got involved in journalism, because he started writing a legal blog that turned into a news blog that turned into... He founded The Intercept, and then they kicked him out of it, and now he's on the base stage platform, Rumble. Wow. Log on? Wow. And we How did a lawyer get, get, get uh, hornswoggled out of his own company? Wow. Makes me think he might not be too bright. Yeah. Well, 
there's just some weird shit going on with that whole thing. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, if he's such a journalist, why is he sitting on all that information still to this day? And whenever people ask about it, Stonewall. Mm-hmm. That's weird. It's very weird. Because, I mean, at the time when the Snowden leak came out, it was earth shattering. It wasn't no shock to me, and I'm sure it was no shock to you to find out that now we have the receipts to prove that, yes, you were right. The United States government is spying on you at all times. But. This is how they're doing it, and this is the code they're using. Well, what what did the public program. do about it? Like when no. the news broke, and when people found out on the six o'clock news or the eleven o'clock news or whatever, you know, on on fucking Hannity or O'Reilly or whatever the fuck they were watching, uh, fucking uh, who's the CIA chick on MSNBC? Maddow, Rachel Maddow, Rhodes Scholar, by the way. That's right. Um. What did people do? What did they do? Were they out in the streets? Were they up in arms? Were they petitioning their local local representatives about it? Did they do anything? I think some people, after learning this, rather than going to eat out, may have eaten a Hot Pocket. Mm -hmm. I think that's about the most impact it made. And not even one of the good Hot Pockets with the pepperoni and cheese. No, the nasty one. The Philly and cheese Hot Pocket. Nothing at all like a Philly. No, no. And, th- and that was the result of the Snowden leak. Some people decided to eat a Philly Hot Pocket instead of going to get a real Philly cheesesteak. Ask uh, Dylan in the, uh, well, I'll ask him myself. Okay. Dylan, have you ever had a Hot Pocket Philly steak and cheese? And if so, what the fuck were you thinking when you can get a real Philly steak cheese? Anyway. Can you still? I mean, Philly's kind of rough now. Have you seen Philly lately? Uh, only from a distance. Yeah. You don't want to get too close. It's very dangerous. It's, I mean, it's starting to get rough in Philly. <laughs> there was a truck driver. There was a truck driver up off of uh, the northern stretch of I-95. Not far from where a bridge on I-95 in northern Philadelphia actually caught fire and burned and collapsed. Closing the Interstate 95 corridor, which is the single busiest highway in all of the Americas. Yep. Connecting Miami to Boston by way of Richmond. Uh, And this truck driver parks his truck in a Walmart parking lot, goes home, takes a nap in his own bed instead of sleeping in a sleeper, goes back to his truck the next morning and the trailer has been emptied of its contents because he was transporting nickels from the United States Mint. I think I remember hearing about this. Uh, Dylan Nickel. said negative Ghost Rider. Hell fucking no. All right. I just gained a whole new respect for Dylan. I love you, man. Okay. Uh, so I gain someone, respect for him every day. Someone pried open the back of this man's semi-trailer and stole, I don't know how many metric tons of nickels. Then, of course, they spilled some nickels across the parking lot in the pro- in the process of this heist. And if you're wondering if the nickel thief got away, sadly, the nickel thief was finally caught. Thanks to oh, no. Coinstar. Oh. They went to Coinstar, some of those coins. See, that's that's where D.B. Cooper had it right, man. Paper money. Paper money. Keep it paper. Yeah. Keep it paper. And did they ever find D.B. Cooper? Not as far that's as That's a know. no. That is a resounding no. Yeah. He got away scot-free, folks. Yep. He did it. He did it, folks. Watch. Like An example five years from now, five years from now, we'll get like a declassified file from the CIA. DB Cooper was a company man. It was an op. Hopefully not. That that might be the only American hero we really have left to believe in. DB Cooper. What about Unabomber? He's an American hero. 
I uh, believe in the Unabomber. Yeah, he was but, a man ahead of his time. Read that manifesto one more time, Drizzle. I don't know. That guy was that guy. That guy was pitching strikes, buddy. Everything he threw was inside the batter's box. Come on. And who doesn't love a nice pair of aviator Unabomber glasses? You know, I'm all about the sunglasses. I got my Gaddafi sunglasses on all the time. <laughs> Speaking of Libya, they still got slave markets over there. Yes, yes. Because everyone over here is. Yes, they're they're trying to find help. All the restaurants, everyone's hiring, trying to find help. I know. Um, if you are looking for uh, human labor, you need, check out Libya. You know, they have they, a robust market at the moment, from what I hear. Been having job fairs at the local county fair and exposition center. Sure. Sure. Not Whatever getting much call. interest. Yep. Can't find warm bodies to fill your kitchen. Maybe it's time you gave Libya a thought. Just saying, employers. Just saying. And you know, Libyans aren't the dark Africans. Most of them are much lighter. So yeah. you, you probably well, they're, they're probably at the top will, part near the Mediterranean, right? So I, I a recommend little, little Benghazi. Bit more mixing going on there. Benghazi. And and of course. If you're hiring on a budget, well, you can set your limit on what your, you know, what's your top bid you're willing to pledge to buy a fellow human being to be your kitchen slave. Just give it a thought. Libya. It's right there. It's, it's, it's called the Barbary Coast, mm -hmm. the shores of Tripoli. If you can't find it on a map, ask the U.S. Marines. They all know it because it's in their case on song. Anyway. Paul's a Montezuma, Shores of Tripoli. That's right. Hoorah! That's right. There you go. That's right, Devil Dogs. So uh, you were in the military, weren't you? Yes, I was an Army grunt. All right. Shout out to the poverty draft. Hey, it paid for my college. Not. Anyway. Right. Because that's the scam. Hey, sign up. We'll pay for your college. And then when it comes time for them to uphold their end of the bargain, they're like, nah, we were just fucking with you. We changed the TOS. Yeah. That's the one time you should not have TLDR, Yona. That's oh. right. That is right. All right. Well, we, we are uh, comfortably inside the second hour now. Uh, you know, like a well-worn shoe. Or... Uh, you know, you can come up with your own analogies at home, people, trying to keep this family friendly, all right? You think we should go ahead and lay it on, people? Because are we going to watch the whole thing? Because it's like 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, I'll start it. How about that? Like, I'll get well, it started, you know, and we'll uh, see what we want to do. At the outset of our Hawaii vignette here, yeah. I just got to give a special shout out to one of my fellow stoners who has actually hit this very pipe you see in the camera shot right now. Oh, yeah. This is my um, Jaguar pipe uh, that I bought. Uh, actually, I didn't buy it. It was given to me by a Mayan chief at the Chichen Itza historical site in beautiful Quintana Roo state of Mexico. And uh, the guy that hit this pipe with me, his name is Craig Jardula, a.k.a. Oh, yeah. Pasta. I was wondering if and, that was who it was going to turn out to be. And Pasta has actually gone to Lahaina a couple times now and, and put together some videos. Yeah. Uh, Pasta been going on the ground in Hawaii. So I just wanted to give a special shout out to, to my good friend and stoner colleague, The Pasta. All right, take it away. Very nice. All right, let's see. I didn't when I didn't listen to it with the audio the first time, so I don't know what the audio is going to be like. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, well, I mean, you guys are going to see for yourselves. So yeah, film November twenty sixth. So uh, as of now, just about three. Hey, weeks hello, guys. Ago. Eric West here, HawaiiRealEstate.org. dot org. As you go through this video, I'd like you to, um, I'd like to encourage you to do what I'm doing right here. Stop, pause, zoom in on anything that you find unusual, like these two cars, completely melted, 
but no apparent ignition source around them, anything to sustain that level of melting. Don't see how that's possible. The purpose of these videos is evidence, and the only way that this evidence will matter is if you care and watch and study and then share the video and share it with people of importance, people that are in the fire industry, that are in politics, that are in power, friends, neighbors, bring awareness. Because as I look at these videos, and I am no fire expert by any stretch of the imagination, but a lot of things just don't make sense. Right here we're flying over what used to be the UPS store, the water store, subway. Honopi'ilani Highway is to the right. This is Papalau Street. Here's just a field of cars, completely melted. No structures around them. Metal, everything you're looking at is metal. Even some of these containers you can see are burned on the inside. Here we have the Shell Station. It burned across the street. The credit union, Maui County Credit Union, not burned, but as you can see on both sides, everything is burned. But that building is perfectly fine with solar panels. This is Mill Street heading towards the south. Obviously, everything is burned. In a moment here, I'm gonna turn the drone again towards another lot that is full of cars, no structures. And of course, everyone the knows are completely that melted. the temperature of the fire glass, has to be melting, melted three times as hot aluminum wheels. to actually burn grass and foliage from trees. Because you know, you get up to a thousand well, degrees yeah, and that's it, hot enough to melt steel in cars, but you got to get up yeah. to 5,000 degrees to get dry leaves to actually catch fire in a forest fire. Correct. And because that's why they have moisture inside of them that will uh, prevent right. them from igniting. And it was the moisture in all of those intact blades of grass and palm fronds and tree leaves that prevented them from being melted like those highly flammable steel boxes everywhere. Mm. everyone knows if you're trying to start a fire you don't want to use pieces of wood or like dry leaves to start a fire start with a couple of pieces of steel <laughs> just rub the two pieces of steel together it, it's uh. going to be so hot it's going to melt the whole all the way to china <laughs> trees appear to be okay even some leaves are still on there yet these cars are completely melted <sighs> as I continue to fly yeah and there's there's other spots that you'll see if we get far enough along where like everything around a tree is burned but the tree is just like it's perfectly fine the drone again this is over Lahaina Luna Road this is where the school buses were parked it was there the oh, next no, day. No, I'm almost Everything out of drink. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm going down to the refrigerator to get a Mountain Dew Maui Blast. Be right back. Melted. But yet the school buses were fine. And as I fly towards the north here, you're going to see a, a blue car that's fine, a blue container that's fine why things that were blue stand out as surviving this i don't understand that of course but if you are in the fire business if you are someone that's a firefighter or an arson investigator i believe we need to create a coalition of concerned members of this country of the world and get an investigation going the area i'm showing right now we're still not allowed in i flew this drone 108 days after the fire there's a truck right there that's blue, that's fine. Everything else, as you can see, is melted. All the containers appear to be affected. You know, over here to the left, you have a container that catches my eye here in a moment that I fly over. And it's apparently fine with solar panels on top. Undisturbed. I mean, have you seen anything like this before? I did Let this be a lesson. Before. To no, all you citizens you know, out there, was flammable. vote blue no matter who. The impression that you were safe if there was a fire around and you were surrounded by metal. But in this fire, metal seemed to be more flammable than natural things. Let's go holla.
brewery below us right now. Uh, this is the, where the pawn shop used to be, West Maui Safety Check. Over here to the right is some type of an industrial center. Again, it appears that everything metal has melted. All the cars incinerated, yet no structures around that would provide a... Palm tree looks like it's doing all right. ...car to catch fire. Gas tanks, as you probably know, don't explode. This is Opukea. Only certain buildings at Opukea burn. And then again, for the fire to cross this massive concrete spillway, which I'm going to say is at least 30 yards across, seems improbable. Seems like that'd be a great natural fire line. This is Ho'onanea. Most of the buildings were okay. And again, somehow the fire is able to cross over this concrete spillway. And these are the buildings that burned. I call it the mystery of Emerald Plaza. The wind was blowing not towards these buildings, but towards the ocean. So how did it cross the spillway? These are metal buildings, completely melted. After I shot my ground video, you can see now they put the fence up. You can see the black fence is there. That was not there before. So now we no longer have access to the Emerald Plaza buildings. Again, a little orientation. Well, they can't finish a wall on the border with Mexico, but How they sure the got that wall up in Lahaina in as fast as they got the, the new wall from D.C. for the military the installation north. inauguration uh -huh. part. Well, blowing from the east to the west. Everywhere I look, I see undisturbed vegetation. Mm-hmm. But that's the very first thing I so noticed from the very first report I ever saw. The first image I ever saw of Lahaina when it happened that each and every was of that building we'll subscribe surrounded by intact we'll trees, the book, but the metal building was burnt better, down to the foundation, and all the vehicles and parking lot were burnt down, 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 but yet even the grass around the curb of the sidewalk the was undisturbed now. and perfectly green. You see a random burned out No, the blades of grass were so much as even singed. over that here in a moment. And here we are but that'd be a lesson to you folks tuning in tonight. If you thought a shark NATO was the scariest thing, the market, since it was, check out a fire NATO. Completed. Shout out to the United so States Air Force. Affordable housing, rental apartments. Oh, shit. Completely incinerated. Those are the I uh, looking at this building, the day elevator the shafts. Fire, it was still burning. There was nobody trying to put it That's out. That's the only thing remaining and from an apartment were, building. Fire trucks up on the hill putting out some hot spots in the grass, but they just let this building burn. Why, I don't know. And just the other day, I showed a blue Toyota truck that survived. And uh, off in the distance there, you can see uh, the rest of the industrial complex here and how all the buildings around it were perfectly fine. But this was a massive, massive structure. So, so let me cut in right here, Grizzle. You know, you if... at one time, I was the actual county surveyor of Marion County, taken over for my father, Sam Anselmo, who had taken over for my grandfather, Melvin Probus, LS-727 and LS-2688. I'm professional land surveyor 3753KY for Kentucky, or lubricant, both really. Um and uh, so I every day when I would go down to the deed and map room to work on my next property survey, for shits and giggles, I would always go over to the latest deed book that they were up to, which at that point was like deed book 248 or 250. They're up to the 300s now, maybe even to 400 by now. Is I haven't been practicing surveying in Marion County since 2008. But um, I would look in the current most recent deeds that had been publicly recorded. 
in the newest deed book that was being compiled by the court clerk while I was county surveyor. And I would look at that to find out who is buying up all the land these days, how much money are they spending for that land, and what shell corporation are they using. And then I would oftentimes then have to go to the DBA books, or I'm sorry, DBA stands for doing business as right. the DBA or the alias book, as some of the clerks call it. Uh, and I would go into that to find out, okay, who in the fuck is shit sniff LLC? Oh, it's Elmer Julius George, the richest lawyer in town. This is another one of his money laundering drug shell corporation. Um, and right. so, cause that's how the business works. Right. And that's, you know, you get, you gotta, you gotta wash the money. Yeah. I ask Ukraine. It's called a money laundry. Ask Afghanistan. It's called a money laundry. So, um, I mean, that's what Julian Assange said. They asked Julian Assange about uh, Afghanistan. He said it's just a money laundry for the Department of Defense. It's, it's a forever war. Never meant to win that war. Just right. To sell weapons. Um, isn't that what all wars are for? Just to sell weapons? Um, yeah. But nonetheless, the population. I learned as a practicing land surveyor that if you want to see live streamed receipts for the current uh, corruption of the day as it's happening, hmm. just go to your local courthouse, hmm. find the court clerk's room, ask where the deed books are, you don't want to do a search on the computer because they don't add the searchable computer results sometimes for up to a year. Now, a lot, and in some courthouses, digitize stuff and everything. But nonetheless, in order to see the latest deeds that have just been filed and recorded in your courthouse, go to your court clerk's office in the deed room. And, and so I am curious beyond all get out What's going to happen in Oahu County, Hawaii, in the Lahaina District, when it comes to deeded ownership of these different parcels, where some were incinerated, all vegetation intact, mm -hmm. and other lots were completely left untouched. Yeah. Everything is intact. Yeah. And so... You know, it's not very difficult to go through the property tax records and the current deed books and find out whose property is being stolen and what land is being grabbed because mm -hmm. this is the most blatant example well, of already, burning people mm -hmm. out and grabbing their land yeah. that I've ever they seen already said as that's a what surveyor or a human. They, they already said, basically, that the government was going to come in and uh, declare, essentially, eminent domain, seize all the land, parcel it up, and then start uh, auctioning it off to, you know, whoever, multinationals and uh, uh, technology companies and other people that, you know, want to build cities like uh, Microsoft and Elon Musk. Google. And that's totally, completely unconstitutional and illegal. Just because there's been a natural disaster, oh, yeah. that does not erase your fee simple title ownership well, in the deeded piece of property that you've owned, occupied, lived on, and possessed by deed with yeah. warranty title and properly recorded public evidence yeah. of such per the Virginia Hennings statutes and the statute of frauds that requires that you record a copy of your deed to the property with the local court clerk's office. Mm -hmm. That law dates back to 1640 something in the mm -hmm. Jamestown colony. Yep. It's one of the oldest legal standards in the entire United yep. States yep. in order to legally own a car, a boat, a house, you must have written proof of title. QR code ain't going to cut it. Yeah. So yeah. how do you then just say, oh, we're going to use eminent domain 
to extinguish these fake flames and mm-hmm. extinguish all title and equity that you have in the property so that we can then illegally and unconstitutionally take your property without just compensation. Well, and just they're just going to do it, master right? Commission. Like, so this is, this has been the, uh, the modus operandi since we entered into this new era. Uh, some people call it clown world. I call it COVID land. Uh, it's the same thing. We're talking about the same thing. Um, but there's a, there's a trajectory here. Right, there, right. there, there is a course we can plot yeah, and this that's all what I'm makes saying. perfect sense that's because the saying. eminent domain power of they're just the gonna state. do it all right they're gonna go because and they're gonna do it it's probably gonna be i don't know last week of the year when everybody's see, mind is on christmas and new year's and like they're not paying attention they're just going to do it uh and it's going to be very quiet it's going to be kept under the rug as much as possible and then anyone who owned any property that gets seized is going to have to go through the court system in order to have their case heard. And I would imagine there's probably going to be, you know, a fair amount of people that's going to have to, some of those people are dead. All right. So we're not going to have to worry about them. The government's just going to take their land. and Nobody's going to say shit about it because they're dead. Uh, But the other people are going to have to go through the court system. Right. And by the time and after they've spent all the money, if they actually have the money to spend, because, again, they only got 700 for their property that got. I mean, why ask shit, for legal permission to do this from the told, citizenry when you just do it? And then domain. Sorry, you have no case. Goodbye. And that's going to take about 10, 15 years, probably. See. Eminent domain began as the power of the state to abandon and condemn property that would be taken exclusively for the public use for the construction of perhaps a power line or a gas line or a water line or a public road or turnpike. Something um, that the public that would benefit Something from. that benefits all of the public equally. Um. And that's what eminent domain was for. But then the legal precedent was set in one of the worst Supreme Court rulings of all time. And there's so many to choose from. I mean, perhaps Citizens United and McCutcheon versus FEC are the absolute worst, which basically legalized bribery. But nonetheless, I, as a surveyor, see the decision in Nancy Kelo et al. versus the state of Connecticut as being the worst Supreme Court decision in all of history. Because what happened was the city of New London in Connecticut, shout out to Dylan and the audience there. um, New London is on Long Island Sound. It's beachfront property. And Hewlett Packard um, was building a new factory there uh, on the beachfront adjacent to Nancy Kilo and her neighbors. Uh, And as part of this deal, they were supposed to build a concrete parking garage uh, because they're on the beach and it's Connecticut. They're, they were pressed for space. They couldn't just blacktop 10 fucking acres for a cheap, quick and dirty parking area. They, or as they call it in um, Canada, they were going to have to build a parkade, which is what we would call a parking garage right? or parkade. What are you talking about? Eh? Um, so, uh, Push comes to shove, and Hewlett Packard's got their building open, and they're about to start hiring. And they let the city of New London know they don't have the money to build the concrete parking garage, so they're not going to be able to open the factory. They just don't have enough room to build an actual parking lot. And New London's like, no, 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 no. We're going to save these jobs. We are going to save these jobs for our community. So the city of New London will go in and launch eminent domain proceedings against Nancy Kilo and all of her neighbors to force them off their property. And then as soon as the city forces them off their property and bulldozes their lots flat, like the IDF in Gaza, um, then the city of London will just literally give the deeds to Hewlett Packard for $1. 
and that's yeah. what happened. Well, and so Kilo an and them went to court and said, "Hey, you can't do that. You can't. You can't as the state go in and take private property from individuals under the guise that it's for the public interest, and then immediately give it to a different private landowner." That's illegal yeah, but, as fuck. See, here's, but what the here's Supreme the Court part. said, Yona. it's not illegal. Yona. It's here's, not illegal. It was for a public mm, interest because they're creating Here's the beautiful jobs. part. If the public isn't aware that it's happening, there's no repercussions. Like yeah. it, just, it just happens, and then they find out about it years and years and years later. And, oh, everybody's up in arms, but nobody does anything about it then either, so it doesn't matter. There was an outrage, and there is still outrage to this day throughout the geometrician industry here of civil engineers and land surveyors. Every single practicing land surveyor and civil engineer knows about Nancy versus Kilo because it completely defiled and broke the very basis of our land system in the United States of America, and that is you must have written proof of title to own your property, and the state cannot take your land and just give it to a different private landowner. That's not eminent domain. That's not asset forfeiture. That's a violation of three different amendments of the Constitution. That's an illegal taking. That's a quartering. I mean, it, it, on and on and on and on and on and on. But... Uh, no, what the Supreme Court said was that eminent domain taking of private property was legal because it was for the greater public good because of creating the jobs and the economic development from those jobs and employment that it was doing so much good for the community that those landowners had to sacrifice the lands that, in the case of Nancy Keel, that their family had owned for over 120 years. But whatever. we got job creators now, and they're creating jobs, so shut the fuck up. Own nothing and be happy. Here, work at Gila Packard. Where did that originate from, the greater good? Where did that come from? Mm -hmm. I don't know, every time I get beat over the head like a club with the greater good, it's normally the club of Rome. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if Wikipedia knows. <laughs> we'll take bets down in the live stream chat on whether or not Wikipedia It's for knows. the greater good, folks. And so, based upon that Supreme Court precedent that the state can use eminent domain now to seize property simply for dot 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 the greater good that kilo decision provides the legal basis somewhat flimsily but nonetheless provides the legal basis for authorities in oahu county hawaii to now use eminent domain proceedings to seize properties that are not abandoned nor condemned, just victim to destruction. And I would not call that an act of God. I have more respect for the higher power than that. No, it was an act of somebody. I don't think it was God. Oh, wow. Did you know there's actually a website called greatergood.com? Your actions at greatergood.com have helped people, pets, and planet. Not the planet, just planet. So no telling which planet it might be. Click to support food for hungry people and animals, healthcare, education, and other important causes today. It's free. Again, still don't know which people on which planet we're helping, but, you know, whatever, right? By the way, I did just find out that, in fact, Lahaina, um, as we just established, it was... Not an act of God. It was act blue. Vote blue no matter who. Back to you. Sir. There you go. Let's see. We have a Quora page. What does it really mean when people say it's for the greater good? I don't know if I'm going to find my answer here, though. <laughs> That's funny. 
One of the answers is the phrase is used to justify doing something that in general is considered a wrongdoing. You don't say. No, I don't think I'm going to find my answer here, unfortunately. I'm asking Ecosia the question, when was the phrase, quote, the greater good, end quote, coined? Yeah, I'm going to have to check out that greatergood.com website. Right. I have and a sneaking so, suspicion they might be communist. All right. How the greater good is used as a tool of social control. Let's see what the Yona has found here. Uh, oh, wow. This is TLDR type. Up. Let's go back to the snippet that I had in search results. Huh. Okay. How the greater good is used as a tool of social control. Ludwig von Mises. No shit. Epistemological problems of economics. This collectivist mindset is foundational to communism, fascism, and yes, folks, socialism as well. The common good before the individual good, mm -hmm. proclaimed one collectivism's most infamous adherents, Mises. That's right, Ludwig von Mises. So we're gonna we're gonna blame we're gonna put the blame for the greater good on Ludwig von Mises' uh, tome, the epistemological problems of economics. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because that's what we do at Grand Theft World. We, we we get deep in the bookie book stuff. Yeah. Well, and it makes sense, too, because I also stumbled upon the uh, Longman Dictionary, which uh, lists the greater good as a general advantage that you can only gain by losing or harming something that is considered less important. So, again, putting the emphasis towards the group as opposed to the individual, which is being harmed or potentially lost or, you know, unalived. Just remember, it's for the greater good. It'll only hurt yeah. for a little while. He's only going to put the tip of it in. Yeah. It's only going to be super painful, but just for a little bit. Isn't that what Bill Gates said about the side effects? Well, it's it might be super painful. You know, I would say that the NPCs are lining up to jump from the cliffs like lemmings, but I was corrected on that many years ago that, in fact, the Disney movie of the lemmings jumping from the cliff, the lemmings were not suicidal. They were actually being kicked off the cliff by Walt Disney himself. Oh, wow. That's dark. That's really dark. And, and now you know why Mickey Mouse is black. Yeah. That's like uh, tunnels under Disneyland that pedophiles use to smuggle children. That's right. That's, a, that's that level dark. Wow. You know, that process is actually called a steamboat willy. <laughs> Shame on you, Mickey. And we know what you did with the 911 hijackers, Mickey mm -hmm. Mouse. We're on to you, buddy. I saw that picture. Wait till Minnie finds out. Goodness. So, did you hear the news today, Yona? It 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 went down today. Oh, I don't know. Did were you out working? I guess you were working. I, today? I've been I've been You're probably busy. I've been working pretty much nonstop since Monday morning after the main show went off the air. Okay. Well, then you might not know uh, that they got the the bill for the NDAA. Uh, oh passed yeah, today it passed. It passed. That's right. The was, National Defense the Authorization Act. The narrowest of margins. Uh, passed razor, by one vote. Razor thin, uh, according to Thomas Massey. Um, I don't know if anyone could tell that was sarcasm. By the way directed at Representative Thomas Massey. Uh, 
But that was his description, that it was close. Yep, they got it all passed, and all the amendments stayed on it. It's all good. Uh, they can continue with the warrantless surveillance uh, for at least until the spring. So, it's all good. No restrictions on FISA. Nope, no. nope, 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 nope. It's all good to go. All wrapped up. Uh, which uh, nice FISA... FISA is um, we did it, F-I-S-A. We did it. FISA stands for the Foreign Intelligence we did it. Surveillance Act. Because Correct. ostensibly, all of these Americans are being spied on without a warrant because the government is trying to spy on foreigners. But they have to spy on these citizens sure. because they're having contact with Foreigners. And, you know, I don't know about you, but when I think of foreigner, I want to know what love is. Anyways. Oh, I, no. I uh, no. That's not, <laughs> not what I think of when I think of foreigner. <laughs> There's Fox even better Hero, songs. Is that foreigner? <laughs> There's even better songs by foreigner than that one. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, damn. That's what comes to mind when you think of foreigner. Wow. When I think to... of foreigner, I think urgent. Oh, we got to get that oh, wall yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Been a lot of uh, references. You know why back they have to, to the get that wall recently. built with Mexico? Mexico is going to help put up that wall to keep all the Americans out that are trying to escape the, the uh, death coal in 2024. Oh, oh. I, I didn't I say that. I still thought Mexico out, was paying for it. Is that not that not like happening it. anymore? Can you edit that out? I did. I don't want to spoil twenty twenty four. Next year's going to be great. People don't pay attention. Yeah, somebody will discover this five years from now, and they'll be like, "Oh, look, they predicted the future. They're the new Alex Jones." Oh, and if you're wondering if if my smile looks a little bit different, yeah, yeah, I, I lost another piece. Bam. Where do you think you lost it? Oh, it, it broke off as I was eating some Tudor's Biscuit World. Shout out to James Evan Pilato. Oh, damn. No, nothing like eating food and you're like, this, this isn't chewing up. and Oh, because it's a whole tooth. Yeah. I love growing old. Shout out to uh, Municipal Water Treatment Facilities. Yeah. Wow. Apparently, there's a whole field of medicine called dentistry. I wouldn't know. Medicine? Somebody told you it was part of medicine? No. Well, the wife, the no, wife keeps not, telling no, me, huh? you know, you should just go to the dentist and have all your teeth pulled out and get some dentures. Well, they can do that. They can yeah. do that. It's uh, it's not cheap. Yeah. And it's kind of painful from what I understand. I don't know. Adam Curry did it. So if you got yes. Adam Curry money, I'm sure you could find somebody to hook you up. I bet. I bet you could even find somebody like uh, deep in the holler in Kentucky that might do it for like, I don't know, 30% of the price. Well, there's this really cool four foot two. Probably inch take less ball. time that way too. There's this friend of a friend of mine he's this really cool four foot two inch tall vietnamese guy that makes gangster grills oh yeah and so i'm thinking why should i pull out what's left oh. of my meth grill when i can just cover it with a gangster grill and shine like quavo from the migos yeah you could do that yeah i dabs like that yeah you should get him to build you like a jaws set you know from yeah, like James from Bond the James movies. Bond movies. Yeah, yeah like yeah. Moonraker Jaws. Yeah. yeah. I gotta say, Moonraker Just was get the like most a single bully. diamond right in the middle. Shout out to um Oh, I can't think of his name now. Um Ian Fleming. Yes, that's his name. Shout out to uh -huh. Ian Fleming's 007. Yeah, that was his the, real name, sure. The Moonraker episode of the James Bond movie series starring Roger Moore. Um, shout out Gay Zero. Uh, 
I got to say, that was the most believable moon landing footage I've ever seen. Moonraker puts the Apollo film to shame. Well, they had a lot longer to work on it because Moonraker was in the 70s. So they had better technology. They weren't constantly losing shit, you know. Yeah, I mean, actually, 2001 A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick predates that. Yeah. Moonraker. Yeah. Uh, and and, and a fun fact, Stanley Kubrick actually worked on the uh, Laurel Canyon and some of the... Uh, and and the Idaho site at the uh, what's now Crater National Park in really? Idaho, Moon Crater. Really, wow! Shout hey, out LD. <laughs> you know, you know what uh, predates NASA by like a good twelve months. Hmm. Laurel Canyon. No, DARPA, the Defense Whoa. Advanced Research Projects Agency, and guess what? DARPA was working on. 12 months before NASA. Rockets. Going into space. Wow. Yeah. What are the chances? Isn't that crazy? Now, and then NASA just... comes along and they're just like, oh, okay, we'll just give this to you, I guess. Now, if we can just get that rocket genius over at the Panamunda Works in Poland, yeah. who's been blowing the fuck up out of Britain with his V-2 rockets, we got to get this guy down to the Redstone Arsenal in Alabama on the double. Shout out Werner Von Braun. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like NASA was created to to be the public face of a space agency that the public was never going to have anything to do with. Nah, but Na- nothing like NASA that was, happened. But, but my dad used to speak so lovingly of NASA because it was a civilian-run organization. Oh, yeah. Do you know what NASA stands for? Uh, yes. Um, shout out to Sally ride. Uh, it means need another seven astronauts. That's the challenge. Very popular. That is a very popular answer. Uh, that is incorrect though. NASA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Sorry, Sally ride. That's a good one because of yeah. Challenger. Um, no, it actually stands for never a straight answer. Wow. Because you makes can sense. never get a straight answer out of anyone you know, I, at NASA. Every yeah. single NASA press conference I've ever heard, fucking word salad. And at, they don't care what kind of dressing you, you that you want or prefer. You're getting Thousand Island. Hey, hey, get look at this cool Island picture of this new planet we found. Oh, wait a minute. That was the pepperoni on the floor in the in the lunchroom never mind true story yep. true story and and that reminds me of a uh, a song i was thinking about earlier today that i wrote about the ongoing and yet still worsening crisis in the united states of child suicide uh it continues to get worse uh, and it's so bad that it inspired me to write and record the song Rectangle and Square Cube, uh, which is about cafeteria school pizza, which is in the shape of a rectangle. Correct. And the pepperoni on your rectangle pizza is in the shape of a square cube because it's cafeteria school pizza. We all know, love, and remember it. Oh, yeah, you can actually uh, buy it in the grocery store. Uh-huh. It goes under Shout the brand out. name of Elio's. Tony's. Tony's Pizza. Or Tony's, yeah. Also Tony's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could, but why? What the fuck is wrong with you? Wouldn't it be cheaper just to get a Hot Pocket pepperoni? You would think. I would think it would taste better, too, right? Cause it's all like self-contained, like a like a calzone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're bored, you can take the thirty minutes required to read the entire ingredient paragraph on the back of your hot pockets. Maybe you'll learn some chemistry. Keep uh, Walter White on speed dial for a lifeline there as you're playing. Who wants to be a millionaire? Um, and eat your hot pocket. 
I, I guess tonight's unofficial sponsor of Get Back Harder episode is this eight? Nine. This is episode nine. nine. This is the episode last nine. of the single digits. We're killing shit. We're about to hit double digits. That's right. We're fucking killing it. And so tonight's unofficial sponsor is Hot Pockets. You could eat food, but you don't have time for that. <laughs> Just get Hot Pocket instead. It's almost food. It's, and it's just for the record, folks, alternative, folks, this is where I have to do our standard little plea here. We we do not have native advertising. We do not do sponsored messages. <laughs> we don't even have regular advertising. We don't even we don't have like regular advertisers. Advertising. It's a value for value program here. So for those that enjoy the content and stuff that we put out here, by all means, for those donationally inclined, hop on over to manufacturingreality.org and click on the donate link there and there's all the different ways you can donate and uh, the drizzle and the yona are also available on paypal and all those other wonderful places oh, yeah. cash app where PayPal, cash which app. I, I assume your uh, paypal cash app like the rest yeah. of us um and uh uh find that christmas spirit and if you can give give what you what you value uh, and and that's about as much as I can plead because I'm the world's worst in promotion and and messaging like that. I right. half the time I do my own shows and never even put a link on Twitter because hmm. I'm just too busy getting high all the time. There's weeds to think about always. Well, that's how value for value works, right? Like I can't put a value, uh, I can't put a number on the value that somebody else receives from something. You can't put a number on it. Only they can put the number on it right and it's also they they also have to make the effort right they have to uh they have to know that they receive value some people probably listen and and don't know that they're receiving value because they haven't figured it out yet you know you know i was told the most incredible thing tonight the most incredible thing my wife told me when i went downstairs earlier she said that my niece when she was working uh across the state line over at the local grocery store uh, collecting up uh, shopping buggies. I guess some would call them shopping carts in other parts of the country. We still call them shopping buggies. So she's uh, gathering up the the, the shopping uh, carts out in the parking lot there. And she heard the wee and was immediately looking around because that's my trademark calling card that the infamous yona Correct. motherfucking woohoo yeah and she's looking around and looking around and didn't see me anywhere uh and then went to pushing the carts again uh and then heard my voice again getting louder and then she noticed that she walked past a vehicle that had its windows open and they were listening to a get back harder episode no shit on their radio through their phone listening to the podcast um that's incredible uh yeah and so believe it or not i mean i don't know how many people catch it live and i'm not really sure how much i trust anything on the internet anymore but clearly there are people that whether they're catching it live or after it's reposted uh and also you post some of these over on the youtube channel as well Oh yeah, oh. these go on the YouTube channel. I actually just set up a playlist uh, for Get Fact Harder on the YouTube channel this week, so they're all like all in their own nice, neat little corner. Um, then do you rumble? Yep, yep. Uh, let's see where where all do we go to now? Uh, yeah, you're yeah yeah. That's right. I, yeah. I'm subscribed to the Rumble channel. Rumble, uh, Brighty on Bit Shoot. YouTube, Odyssey, I guess all the all the major players except for Rockfin because uh, they don't seem to know what the fuck they're doing. But you know, if if I was a betting man and I had to bet money like Judge Mills Lane MTV Celebrity Deathmatch style, and we were to pit Rockfin versus the Health Ranger Mike Adams's Brideon platform, mm-hmm. my money's on Brideon. Yeah, mine too. Brideon just continues to be a rising star 
in the media landscape. Rockfin, half the people I mention the word Rockfin to, their response is, what? What's hmm. that? Who? Rock what? Most people have never heard of Rockfin. That doesn't surprise me at uh, all. And, you know, you, you log into Rockfin and they're like, oh, we just upped the subscription fee now. You can join your 20 closest friends yeah. in a nice, intimate viewing of whatever program is on Rockfin. Um, it's literally the smallest audiences you'll find on any platform anywhere. I have to wonder how many people even know that Rockfin exists at this point. Because I, I've stopped asking. Yeah. At one time, I was really butthurt about wanting to get on the Rockfin platform, and I applied twice, and I just never, you know, and and never, and you know, I just wasn't good enough for them. Um, but they actually reached out to me a couple months ago to follow up if I was still interested, and I never responded to that email. So. Mm. I wanted on and they didn't have any interest in me. And then when they finally had interest in me, well, by that time I had already moved on. So that's right. how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> that's the business folks. That's how it works. No, I agree with you. Uh, my, my <laughs> personal experience so far with Brideon, uh, has been nothing but excellent. Honestly, like all their stuff, uh, works. It's easy to figure out. Uh, it's not a pain in the ass to use and, you know, maybe stuff doesn't show up instantly cause they have a, you know, they have to process the videos and we make some long videos so it can take a while. Uh, but it eventually gets done in a timely manner and it's, it's easy. Like, and, and that's everything ship that is, it should be and nothing that it shouldn't. Like, I don't know what else to say. That ship is piloted about. by Mike Adams and he is straight up. He is as straight up as straight up can be. Um, I don't know about all that, but, you know. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I followed him for years. Him, along with the other doctor, um, uh, Mercula. Yeah. Uh, is that Mercola. Name? Mercola. Uh, Dr. Mercola. And because uh, Mike Adams is the health ranger. Yeah. You know, again, you know, about health and stuff. Um. And I'd been following them for years, along with um, uh, what's his name at the High Wire, um, Dale Big Tree. Um, I, I'm talking about you know 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, years before the pandemic hit. Uh, and Mike has always covered such a wide range of topics, and his approach and delivery, and his constant skepticism, and don't jump to conclude. I mean. A lot of his uh, language and demeanor, I'm speaking of Mike Adams, reminds me so much of my good friend Ryan Christian at The Last American Vagabond. Hmm. So, um, and I know uh, my other good friend, uh, Gene Nolan with the Inspired Network, which I've, I've done some uh, several interviews with him, and he went over to Brideon and was singing its praise. Um, and had told me about eight months ago to start posting stuff over there. And now that drizzle has gone over there now, and then my friend Audi with nights of the storm. And there's like three or four people that have now told me, you should really put your stuff over there. So, uh, you know, I, I'm seeing a pattern here. <laughs> well, it, I, I think I might nice. start uploading to Bridie on. <laughs> yeah. They, they have it. It looks like they have it, uh, segmented well you know as they they have like cataloged out into several different uh genres or i don't know areas of interest or something like that so you can kind of put stuff where you think it's most appropriate uh then they've got you know a legit front page where they're like these are the newest videos and or the trending videos in these categories and it's not like you know, a bunch of monkeys pulling the levers behind the scenes that you can't see to, you know, put this in front of you and not this over here. It's, you know, the the way a distribution system should be, as far as I can tell. Kind of like the way YouTube was about 12 years ago. Right. 
Right. Before they started <laughs> breaking shit. But I mean, YouTube was never meant to succeed, right? That's and why I did Google say 12 it. years ago, I took yeah. you back to 2011 because the moment YouTube changed was during the Occupy Wall Street nationwide protest movement. And you saw all of a sudden there was a federal crackdown on websites and then there was a coordinated federal crackdown to close all of the Occupy Wall Street encampments in cities all across the United States. Hmm. And within about four days, the Obama-Biden administration had completely stomped out the entire protest movement and wiped it off the map. Thanks, Obama. And I don't think you've ever, ever heard anything else about Occupy Wall Street. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, Tim Cast makes sure to bring it up at least once a week so that he can remind his listeners why he's supposed to be relevant. You know, Tim Cast really needs to explore haberdashers. If his tactic no doubt, in right? battling alopecia is to just keep with the toboggans. Yeah. The ridicule is only going to grow in ferocity and volume. Tim, I'm begging you. You're in West Virginia just like me, buddy. A cowboy hat. Where, where's my hat? Where's my hat? Okay. I don't, hmm. Come on, Tim. I think he would look You're like... You're in West by God, Virginia. West by God, Virginia. Get a fucking hat. Lose the toboggan, man. Come on. I think he would look like Garth Brooks in a cowboy hat, which is like not, we don't need that. We already had that. We don't need it again. No, we I don't. would say. Cause he's got Tim that Cass, round pudgy face, you know, like Tim pool would look more like a cowboy hat. I think Tim pool would look like a Chris Gaines in a cowboy hat. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. Different, Chris- different fictional representation of the same physical person. Right. Yeah. Right. Because Garth Brooks isn't his real fucking name either, folks. Surprise. I guess I should have put a spoiler alert in front of that. Oh! Um, you know. Does Trisha Yearwood know? <gasps> oh, man, I bet the ex-wife knows. <laughs> Can we prove that any of these people actually exist? Because it turns out Garth was cheating on his pregnant wife when he got with Trisha Yearwood. Boom. Um, but that led to possibly one of the strangest musical moments in history. Um, really, there's two moments in musical history I'll never forget. Two minutes. The release warning. of the Chris Gaines album and then the release of Jordan Peterson's album. I don't know which one is worse. Hmm. You be the judge. You, you know what? Maybe I should remix. Maybe I should remix Jordan Peterson with some Chris Gaines. Dude, that would be gold. Wow. Yeah. And you know what? You know what people are going to say, Driz? Oh my God, that sounds like Garth Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> oh my God. Write that and down. I, Don't forget that. That would have to be that would have to be the Tony Myers remix. Yeah. Because I've done a remix in everybody's name but Tony Myers. And I know at this point, Tony, Mr. Logic Professor himself, he's probably thinking about, man, me and Yona are tight like that. When's Yona gonna throw me some love? Well, there you go, Tony. Chris Gaines. Get ready. <laughs> I wonder if didn't Tony they make, will get that. He'll probably get that. Didn't they Tony. make a VH1 behind the music for Chris Gaines? Did they? I swear they did. I wow. swear they did. Wow. And it, it, it's almost like watching Onion TV or something. You have been fixated on that for the last several weeks. Well, because maybe this when I turn on the radio, <laughs> when I turn on the radio, right in West Virginia, there's three kinds of music to pick from 
rockabilly, country, or western. Right. So the natural choice is rockabilly. And literally every other song is fucking Garth Brooks Ugh. on the radio. It's just nonstop what? Garth Brooks. And Jesus so, Christ. What the fuck are those people doing with their radio? West Virginia is the land that time forgot. If oh, if, if 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 Last Virginia word. is the old dominion, uh-huh. then West Virginia is the no dominion. It's just ruled by corporations. It says it on the state when you cross the state line. Welcome to West Virginia. Open for business. Closed to democracy. There you go. You know what? You 